Hello, my friend. I have such a special episode for you today. We have our first interview on the podcast today, and this is an interview with Paulina Beck. I met Paulina on LinkedIn, and when I saw from her profile that she used to work in the big four and now has her own business, I immediately wanted to know more about her. And I quickly learned that there was so much more to her story than I ever would have expected. So you're going to hear her story throughout the interview, but the super short version is that she so badly didn't want to go back to work after her maternity leave that she just decided to start her own tax practice instead. And she is absolutely killing it now, but it certainly was not all smooth sailing. So last year, Right in the middle of tax season, she faced a super rare medical complication that resulted in her nearly losing her life and basically having to rebuild her life and her business from the ground up. Her story is so incredibly inspiring, especially if you are an entrepreneur or have ever thought about starting your own business, you will not want to miss this one. How many times have you thought about quitting your job and starting a new life? Hey, I'm Lindsay, the girl who actually did that. And now I'm on a mission to change the nine to five narrative that dreading Monday and working for the weekend is normal and acceptable. My goal is to help you see your potential beyond your credentials, gain clarity on what it means to live life on your own terms, and build the confidence to go after your dream career. I'm here to prove to you that it's possible for you to do work you love, make a positive impact on the world, make even more money than you're making right now, and live a deeply fulfilling life. So let's dive in. First of all, thank you so much for doing this interview. You're my first podcast interview. I'm excited. Um, So why don't you just introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your background and where you're at today. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. I'm I'm really excited about this. I can't wait to hear my voice in it. (laughs) Kind of cringe a little. Um, So my name is Paulina Beck, and um, I was working for PwC for three and a half years, I believe. And, um, you know, I started my own accounting firm. Uh, I worked with PwC both in the New York office for about two and a half years, and then about a year in the Oklahoma City office. I worked in IT consulting in New York, and I did um, process assurance in Oklahoma. I started my firm after my first season in audit. I was horrified and I started running for the hills. Not really. I had my son and I decided that, um, you know, I wanted to be more involved and driving an hour and a half each way was not going to make it. So I started my firm, Beckinson Financial. I do tax prep and tax planning. And uh, this is my third year in business and it's it's going pretty well. I actually, um, you know, I've, I've been meeting a lot of people lately and I'm absolutely loving what I'm doing. I love it. So, yeah, I mean, just casually left the big four to start your own business. <laughs> just casually. It was like one that? day, you know, just woke up. Not really. Um, to be fair, for me, what kind of made the change was I was really disappointed by the performance review I received. Um, you know, I had been partaking in an audit and I had found like this super big uh, like material mistake. And, you know, I kind of, in my opinion, I I basically saved the partner's butt (laughs) and I was thinking like, okay, well, you know, I worked really hard. I I found this major error. Like I was supposed to get promoted for senior. So like, this is it. Like I'm on the cusp of it. I'm going to do it. And when, you know, at that point I was pregnant at, you know, so the audit, let's just say finishes around May, April. And I'm about three months before my son's due and I'm thinking, okay, great, go on maternity leave, come back. I'm a senior, right? 
not so much. I basically had a discussion with my director and he's like, you know, we want you to learn a little bit more. You were in advisory before, so we want you to really understand. And then from there we can, and then when I got my performance review thinking like, okay, like, you know, at the time they ranked us from one to five, five, you're getting fired. <laughs> Three was like, you know, you're nothing special. Yeah. One and two, you're looking closer to promotion. So I got a three and I was so upset. I was like, really? Like, what do you have to find? Like, you know, like major fraud, like the next Enron, like what do you got to do here? And, um, you know, that kind of sealed it for me. You know, I was like, I put so much effort in and I was not spending time with my family. Like I had just gotten married. So I was like, never seen my husband. And I was like, there has to be a better way. There just has to be something better out there. And I had been tinkering with like different ideas of what I do. Like I was like, what if I could like do something different? And, you know, I finally decided, I was like, you know, I'm not too bad at taxes. Everyone's asking me tax questions. And on a daily basis, like my family every year is like, so are you really busy with taxes? So I just decided this year I was. So um, yeah, that's kind of how I got there. I love it. So when you were in the big four, did you... I think you started in advisory and then you were in audit. Is that right? So you didn't actually, did you actually do tax at, no. while you were at the big four? No, I didn't. Um, I worked and I call it advisory because the group at PwC moved to advisory after I left. So by all intents and purposes, it was advisory. Um, mm. And, you know, in, in the Oklahoma office, they didn't have that role just because it wasn't part of that market. So the next big best thing was to kind of go into assurance and um yeah I had I didn't have a background in tax formally but I went to school for accounting uh, I ended up getting my degree in finance and econ but I went through all the steps I could sit for the CPA I just never actually did it mm -hmm. so yeah I'm just curious what made you want to start your own not just start your own business, but start your own tax practice. Yeah. Well, for me, actually what like solidified it is I, we had good friends who, um, you know, were starting out just like my husband and I, and you know, their backgrounds are in accounting. So like whenever I said I worked in accounting, people automatically thought I worked in tax. And yeah, you know, my friend gives me a call and she's like, look, there's something wrong with my tax return. I'm using, I think they were using TurboTax or Tax Slayer or something along those lines. And she's like, it's making it look like I owe a bunch of money. Like what's going on? And they were both like, you know, W2 people. So like there, there should be, you know, the odds of them getting it wrong was, was really odd. So she gave me a call and I was like, sure, like I'll come over, I'll see what's going on. And um, we figured it out and it was like, she wasn't, they hadn't included the documentation for like having health insurance and that was like taxing them mm -hmm. like off the wahoo and she's like thank you so much like that made a world of a difference and like just realizing that like something that seemed so simple to me and like came naturally to me like really made an impact in someone and they're like you made taxes so much easier for me and all I did was like add the fact that they had insurance yeah. <laughs> it wasn't anything crazy <laughs> you know but kind of getting that feedback, I was like, you know, I could do this. I could, you know, I could do this full time. And, you know, from there, I just started figuring out what I needed to do. And I started talking to people about their experiences. So I reached out to my mom's accountant, like who did her mm -hmm. taxes and um, my soon to be stepdad's uh, taxes. And, you know, he kind of gave me, a, you know, told me like, this is what's good about this type of business. Like, this is not... And that's a great part, like the struggles, like he kind of told me his journey when he got started. And I was like, you know, I could do it. I could do it. Yeah. And two months after my son was born, which is like, I'm a brand new mom. I have a brand new baby. I'm like, yeah, I don't think I can go back. Like I was on my maternity leave. I was like, I don't think I want to go back. I don't want to go back. So that's when I really bit the bullet on my husband's birthday. I was like, I did it. I created an LLC. <laughs> And I, I was like nervous the entire time, even though I know what it was and how to do it. I was just so nervous and I didn't, I really haven't looked back since. So did you just never go back to work after your maternity yeah, leave? No, nope. I, I basically that, I think my maternity leave ended 
that November, like late November. And like, I guess I could have extended it, but like not gotten paid. And I was like, at that point we knew we were moving as well. So like, I would have had to have another transfer to another office, given that my husband's mm -hmm. in the military. So we needed to like, move to our next um, station. So I was like, you know, it's not like I'm going to go back and there aren't any PwC offices where we're going, at least not close by. It would be like even a longer drive. So there's a time to yeah. do it. It's now. So yeah, that's when I took the plunge. I'm obsessed with that. So how long did it take you to start getting clients and start making money in your business? Yeah. So it took me, I would say it's taken several steps. To get my first client, like where they agreed to pay me, it took me about a month, about mm -hmm. a month to like figure everything out and realize that small business is very different from corporate business. <laughs> People mm -hmm. are more uh, like, they're just messier, uh, but just because it's, you know, you don't have professionals doing all the, the counting work. So it's just a little messier. So it took me about a month yeah. and, uh, you know, it kind of grew from there pretty quickly. Like, uh, where at least I was, you know, making enough where anything I spend on my business, I was actually making a profit. At the one year mark, I actually started making enough to like, you know, pay my bills on top of my business bills. And mm -hmm. I would say it, it took until about September of last year. Cause you know, I had, had a dip. I had some medical, um, you know, issues and Lindsay, you and I have talked about it, but I was yeah. in September of this past year where I was able to pick up my business again. And now we're, you know, every month I've been growing about 15 to 20%, which is amazing for me. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. No, that's unbelievable. And yeah, I mean, I definitely, if you don't mind sharing, you have kind of a crazy story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I did really want to talk about it. So uh, for, for those of you that don't know what happened to me was, um, at the beginning of last year, I, you know, I was pregnant with our daughter, so my second pregnancy, and uh, she was, um, I was going to have a scheduled C-section on Valentine's Day. We picked that as her birthday because we thought it'd be an awesome birthday to have. And I had the previous month in January, I had hired an assistant to work with me. She was going to move into like a full-time role at my business. I was like, I am making it like we're about a year and a half in and um, you know, hired my first employee. I was so excited. I was planning everything. Everything was going in the right direction. And suddenly the day my daughter is born happens. And I don't remember the following two weeks because I had some labor complications where I was technically dead for two minutes. And then there were some complications with the surgery where they didn't realize that they had nicked an intestine. They didn't catch it for like almost two weeks. So I almost died again. That required about five surgeries, being in a medical coma for like five to six days, I think. I don't remember, so I'll go with that number. And um, a long road to recovery where I woke up and I was in a completely different hospital than the one I delivered at. Um, somehow I had family members that were not there the day I was delivering my daughter or checking in on me. And uh, I suddenly realized I weighed a lot less than I couldn't pick up a phone. I wasn't strong. So um, it, it basically became a journey where I had to not only rebuild my business because it happened right in the middle of tax season, but I had to mm -hmm. rebuild my life. I, like I've told you, Lindsay, I had to learn how to do the most simple things that you take for granted as an adult, like learn how to sit again, which sounds crazy. Uh, learn how to stand, learn how to, um, not because I couldn't remember, but I had lost so much muscle and so much weight because of all the surgeries and being in a coma that I had to learn how to hold my kid. Like I, I don't remember the first time I met my child, like, which as a mom sounds crazy, but I, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. So I had to do all these things all over again while trying to like research, like a completely small business that it was just starting to get off the ground. It's not like I had a manager that said, Hey, I'm going to give birth to my daughter. You take care of the business. I'll come back. Like I was, the yeah. business. so I had to come back, but, um, you know, it, it really gave me an opportunity and I took it as an opportunity to really re-engineer my life, re-engineer my business, see where I wanted to take things. And that as painful and as hard as it was on me, my family and everyone, 
it has given me life to me quite literally <laughs> and my business mm -hmm. right now I think so far in the last three months I've made more than I made the previous year which is crazy so yeah, yeah it, was, uh, it was a tough time but it was a good opportunity to kind of think of everything yeah I mean I remember when you first told me that story and I just couldn't even believe it <laughs> which I'm sure I don't believe it. some of the people I know and I'm sure the people listening are like what <laughs> like it's even happening because it's so crazy and like you literally couldn't like you said you couldn't even hold your phone I mean you couldn't even hold your baby but you literally could not like something as light like, as a phone that you think you, you know yeah. you, you take an iphone for granted you're like okay that's not that heavy like a kid could be heavy but a phone not so much <laughs> yeah so it's like you literally had to like relearn just how to do the simplest things and i was so inspired by the fact that you took it as an opportunity to really I don't know I guess just kind of re redirect your business or like restart and really think about how you wanted to do things and most people I think would have seen that as probably a reason to give up and not an opportunity <laughs> um to go deeper in their business you know like was there ever a moment where you were like I don't think I can like get things up and running again or were you just always 100% set on oh, no. I'm gonna make my business work like I'm gonna figure this out I I'll, I'll be honest um oh there were quite a few moments where I was like I don't know where um like it, I had a, quite a few moments where I was like look like everyone would have quit like no one's gonna be mad at you if you decide to like you know like I remember waking up first thing I asked for is if I could watch The Bachelor and then talk to my <laughs> daughter and then after that um, you know we were depending on the income I was generating you know the expectation was that I was gonna have a great like I had just invested in like paying someone to work for me so to mm -hmm. me as much as like the pain, the amount of pain physical pain I was going through like psychologically like I was just not you know I was dealing with a lot of trauma like um, I just you know as much as I wanted to quit I, I kind of looked around and I was like if I don't set the tone of where this is gonna go it can go south really quickly like I knew no matter what I was feeling no matter what I was going through for my family my friends like everyone like I had to set the tone and even when I wanted to quit and there were quite a few times I wanted to quit and I was crying and I was like I can't do this I told myself like you have to get through this like you have to get through this like I might not know what tomorrow might hold but like today you're gonna get through this and I can't tell you it was easy it was not like <laughs> there were quite a few times that yeah. I wanted to quit but I told myself like who's gonna hire you right now you have to have a major surgery in like three months that's gonna put you out for like eight weeks at least who's gonna hire you like no one so and it was just kind of like, okay, like, it's not like I can get a job. Like I've, I've kind of, you know, taken the leap of faith. So I, mm -hmm. I basically found ways to make my work as fun as possible, as weird as that sounds and found my way yeah. to give myself incentives to do better and like be better. And, you know, I just toughed it out, but by no means did I have the resolve <laughs> the entire time. There were many times I wanted to quit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course. And I just, I mean, I can't, even, I still, as I'm listening to you, I'm like, I can't even imagine. <laughs> like, I can't, I don't, I don't know if I would have had that mindset and the ability to just like keep going and keep pushing, honestly. I think, I mean, I, I've talked to a lot of people about it. And uh, I think if I had that conversation with myself before everything happened, what I've learned from everything is like, you don't know what you're going to do until you're put in a certain situation. Like as much as you, you'd like to say, you know, Oh, I think I do this. I do that. Like when you're in the spot, like that's like your survival instinct. That's when you know what you're made of. And like, I think most people would agree that, you know, when you, especially being a parent and, um, being, you know, just having people that depend on you, like 
financially, like emotionally, in so many ways, you're just like, no matter what I'm going through, like, I, I have to be there for those people. So like, for me, on the physical side, I was like, yeah, I know my, ther- my physical therapist told me like, it's going to take me eight weeks to learn how to walk. I'm going to do it in three. And they would tell me, you know, like my first exercises, like in terms of weights to getting my, my grip strength and my arms back up, they would give me like water bottles, like half filled, like a normal little mm-hmm. water bottle, half filled with water. And I would do like my little, uh, like, you know, lifts, <laughs> like reps with it. And she's like, only do five. And then you feel comfortable. Cause again, my heart stopped for two minutes. So like I had to build up my cardio from like, basically yeah. not like imagine like never have run ever. And you run a marathon in one day, like going from there. And I was like, I'm not going to do five. I'm going to do eight. And I would, <laughs> I was just like, I like, cause I would look at my kids and I'm like, I'm going to hold this baby no matter what. So I would like do that. And in terms of my business, uh, what I did is, um, I implemented like radical, <laughs> um, truth into it in terms of like, I would tell myself like, do you like, how many hours can you honestly work? Okay. And then what's really important for you to do? Got it. And what's the problem you really need to solve for your business for it to stay in business and kind of grow. And I would tell myself that it's like, can you promise yourself that no matter what happens today, no matter how you're feeling, no matter what's going on, can you do one of these things? And I would just take it one at a time. And that's kind of how I got through it. And you know, what, once I, you know, got caught up on everything, um, spoke to everyone, things, you know, the, the beginning is always the hardest part. Like that's the hardest, like once you build a habit, it became easier. And now I've reached a point where not only have I changed the procedures in my business, how I do business, like I'm ahead. People are like, are you psychic? Like you called me before I even knew, like I ha- it happened to me yesterday. I, you know, had written down that she, someone was supposed to get a W2 and I like emailed her and I was like, Hey, did you get your W2? And she's like, I was just about to email you. And I was like, I know <laughs> that good. So it, it went from like someone having to tell me, Hey, I got my W2. When can we call, we jump on a call and make sure my tax returns like ready to go. And like, it would take me like a week to respond to like, now I get to people before they even talk to me. And I already have a meeting on the books already for when we're going to review it the first time and when we're going to file. So it's, it hasn't been an easy journey. It hasn't been a straight line journey, but um, I've gotten there. Yeah. So it sounds like you really took that opportunity, which I love that you called it an opportunity. Like I am obsessed with that, but you know, you had to literally relearn everything. And I think a lot of people would just see that as a reason to give up, but you literally saw it as an opportunity to ha- like figure out how you can optimize all of the processes in your business, right? And then you ended up building that up to a place where you're ahead of the game now, Yeah, which just blows my mind and I love it. And one of the biggest things, I mean, I talked to a lot of people who are in accounting in the big four, they hate it. (laughs) They hate the work hours. They want to work for themselves and start a business but they're they're scared of what if I fail right like what if something goes wrong what if I fail what if I can't go back and get another job because that's another thing because one of the reasons why I quit my job one of the things that was in the back of my mind was like if this doesn't work out I can I can just go get another accounting job like I'm literally a CPA I have my master's in tax like I can easily go back to that. So why would it not be worth trying this? But I know that holds a lot of people back because they don't feel as confident that they could just go get another accounting job if it didn't work out. But you were in a place where you were like, I literally can't get another job because people aren't going to hire me because I'm about to go into surgery and not be able to work. And so you took that as a reason to double down on your business instead of just giving up on it all and I'm like like you were literally faced with most people's biggest fear of <laughs> oh yeah quitting their job to start their business it and then something happens where you're not making money and you can't get another job and you just found a way to come out of it so strong and 
that's really why I just thought it would be so valuable to have you on the podcast and have people hear that because that's literally their biggest fear. But you, like you said, you'll realize what you're made of when you're put in that situation, right? And I mean, going off on like working off your biggest fear. So, and I can say I like, I, yes, I made the best out of like a really bad situation, but in terms of like growing my business beyond just like, you know, surviving. Cause you know, in the beginning you're like, okay, I need to come up with like the income I was making while working at the big four. Right. So what I kind of embraced, and this was something that was said to me by a mentor was, um, you, it's going to suck either way. Like whether you stay at the big four or, you know, you go to like another, like not big four, like you go to like more private, um, you know, private industry, it's going to suck. Like whatever it is, like if you're not, you're not loving it, like you're not going to love it more somewhere else. So, Mm -hmm. and when I was in my business and I was barely making any money, like I was, I was like, oh my God, when I was starting my business, my biggest fear wasn't so much that I wasn't going to make it. I thought, you know, my friends were going to make fun of me. They're like, that mm-hmm. crazy girl quit her like awesome job. And my family member said this to myself, like said this to, th- said this to me. They're like, why are you quitting like an awesome company where you have all these benefits and to go at it on your own? Are you nuts? Like you just had a baby and you moved to a different state a year ago. Like, are you crazy? And I was like, it sucks. I don't like it. I hate it. Like I sit in my bed like for like an hour before I had to go to work and go like, you can do this. <laughs> like I would have to like build myself up <laughs> to go to work. And, uh, you know, like I was like, you know, it's going to suck either way. I might as well suck trying to like live my dream and like live it in my own way. And yeah. I realize not to be afraid of that, like not to, because I feel like a lot of people nowadays because of social media, you're like, oh, all my friends are doing something cooler. Like my work friends or my colleagues are like, working at all these cool firms or like have really cool titles or they're getting promotions and you're like, and I'm going to like slum it out <laughs> here on my own. Mm-hmm. And when I came to that realization, it's like, you know, you have to be okay with who you are and like, you have to be okay with like possibly failing. But in reality, if you go at it a hundred percent, like fully commit the odds of you failing. Yeah. I mean, they're still there, but when you're fully committed, you don't let yourself fail. If that makes sense. Like you just, you're like, yeah. okay, this path doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to try this one. Okay, if that doesn't work, like, I'll move on to the next one. So, like, you don't let yourself fail per se. And, yeah, I mean, once I got over that fear, it, like, this week I'm on 13 different sales calls. Like, yeah. From, like, last year at this time, I was barely trying to make one happen a week. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love everything that you just said and that whole concept of like if you're committed you're not going to let yourself fail is something that I live by and I actually remember listening to a podcast about that I don't know I think I told you about her podcast I don't know if you started listening to it um unfuck your brain by Cara Lowenthal Mm -hmm. um she has a podcast episode about massive action which is the term that she uses for like you decide you're going to do something and you just commit to it until it happens. Like no matter how many times you try something and it doesn't work out, you try something else and you just keep getting back up and you just keep going. And that's really how I approached my business too. And it really, I, I don't even think of failure. I like, I think of failure completely differently than I used to. I don't even think failure exist in the sense that most people do because really you either succeed or you give up it's not that you either succeed or you fail like if like you could have given up a year ago when you literally couldn't even like sit yeah (laughs) and you could have said okay I can't do this I can't keep going I'm gonna give up on my business and I don't think anyone would have blamed you for that but that doesn't mean that your business failed because of your medical issues. That means you gave up on it because of your medical issues. And I think understanding that difference and understanding that when you're committed to something, you can't fail. There's only success or quitting. It really just changes your perspective. And I also love that you mentioned, um, you know, seeing your friends on social media and, are they going to make fun of you for doing this? Cause I know that's another huge thing that holds people back. It's like, 
what are people going to think, whether it's their friends, their coworkers, their parents, a lot of the time. Um, and so how were you able to kind of overcome that? If you don't mind talking more about yeah. that, of like how you just stopped caring what other people think and letting that hold you back. So I don't think I ever stopped caring. I think until yesterday, mm -hmm. I still see someone doing something and I'm like, oh man. Um, but I, I kind of, what I found is I found my new community. So I started surrounding myself with other people that were kind of on the same journey as me. And that, I think because the whole thing comparing yourself on social media is because you feel different. So you're like, I'm different mm -hmm. than this person. Like, I'm not doing this. I should be doing that. But once you start meeting other people that are going through the same stuff and like, I made sure to surround myself as I, you know, as I've gone along now, it's been close to three years. In the beginning, it was like other people that were starting out like completely fresh, like no background, nothing. And now like I try to surround myself with people that are just starting out and people that are further ahead than me so that I mm -hmm. can say, okay, what's in my future? Like, remember yourself, like, remember who you were, like when you started and that, like how much you've grown and like, Hey, you're still here. Like you're still here. Like it's not that bad. Yeah. And that's helped me a lot. But like, I struggle with that still. I mean, I see some of my friends, you know, that are, you know, have really cool jobs at Facebook or Google or like really awesome things. And you're like, oh man, like that sounds way cooler. Or like you're, you imagine like how much, like for me, it was like, I gave up like how many hundreds of thousands of dollars to do this, yeah. to like struggle and like ask people <laughs> if they want to work with me <laughs> versus like, I just want, like I would wrap up a project and move on to the next one. And um, yep. by doing that, like by, by like associating myself with like other people, it made it where like, no, we're just on like different paths. Like it's not one's better than the other. It's just your path. Like this is what you wanted to look into. And by fully committing to it and talking about like, you know, your definition of failure for my definition of failure, what I've learned is, did I give it my all or did I come mm -hmm. out? Like, cause I, I do this with a lot of stuff. Like I feel like when I give it my all, like even if I, I completely like fall on my face, I'm like, but I did, I try Like, did I really go into it? Like a hundred percent, like, you know, like, did I take full leap or was I like, you know, like tiptoeing and then like, you know, <laughs> I took an extra step and I fell like, what was it? And I've noticed that every time I give it a hundred percent, like no matter what, like if I have to work an extra hour or like, I gotta, you know, wake up an extra hour early or whatever it is, whenever I go a hundred percent, I've never failed because I know I mm -hmm. gave it my all. And that, and when I gave it my all, like, Maybe I'm really lucky. Who knows? But whenever I gave it my <laughs> all, I've, I've always gotten it. Yeah, I love it. Um, and I think it's such a big thing that I know holds people back. And it's really just the unwillingness to, I think, be seen by other people starting small. Because that's what you have to do when you're going to start a business. And you know, it feels like you're taking a giant step backwards. It can feel like that, but you really, I think, have to be focused on the future and focused on the life that you're creating for yourself. And yeah, maybe you'll have a couple of years where you're not making a lot of money and you're struggling, but then what if all of your dreams really do come true and then you have this amazing life that you've created and you can work from home and you can travel more and you can set your own schedule and you're making more money than you would have been making as an accountant. And I think it's, it's hard to focus on that and not just focus on the immediate future where you're struggling and watching all your friends on Instagram, like travel and <laughs> yeah, I mean, have their amazing jobs times, and stuff. Like I think of like how many times, like I've been working until like two o'clock in the morning, which is not often, but it's definitely happened. Right. Where mm -hmm. I was like, look, these are the, you know, let's just say five things I needed to get done today. And it's the end of the day and three of them haven't been done. So they needed to be done. So I'm doing them right now. Um, and I'm like, this sucks. Like, and then I see someone on like Instagram or, or something like, they're like, Hey, like happy hour or like, you know, going out <laughs> to dinner or like, for me, it's like, I'll see my friends, um, you know, spending time with their kids and they're like, Oh, look what I did with my kid today. And I'm like, and I worked all day. And then I'm like, yep. I also see myself on the other side of it. It was like, 
well, how many of you on a Tuesday took the day off and literally went to the mall and did all this? Yep. I don't see any of you posting that. So <laughs> not that I'm posting it, but like I have to keep myself in check that it's the cool thing about owning your own business is like you do have that balance. And sometimes it's a horrible balance where you're working the entire time and you didn't do anything fun mm -hmm. and you know, you had to respond to a client that was upset. But on the flip side, like I get to see my kids like all the time, whenever I want to, I, um, I, I do lunch dates with my husband. Like I literally will pop up at his work and be like, where do you want to go for lunch? I'm available. <laughs> and by no means of, yeah, by no means could I have done that if I had stayed at PwC and yeah. also like make, I thought I would make it to partner. I, I when I started, I don't know about you, but I was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to make it. And I could probably make it well now I'm a partner so but I could yep. probably you know be making that partner money like everyone talks about like oh you know big spender I'm like I could do that a lot sooner and in my own terms like a lot what is it like yes. 15 years right like it takes about 15 to, to make it to partner normally mm -hmm. I could do that in four or like yes. Like, and for like, realistically, like, we're not talking about like, you know, you start your business like on Monday and like next week you're like making 10K and like blogging about it. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about like how, how the rest of us struggle, like how the rest of us got there. It's like, yeah, it didn't take me 15 years and I actually like what I do. So. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I love that you said that because so many people only focus on like, what if it doesn't work? What if, or they think that you know, quitting their job to do something they love, whether it's starting a business or working for someone else, just doing something they love, they automatically think that means making less money for whatever reason. And it's like, well, yeah, you might make less money if you own your own business, but you also might make a hell of a lot more money, a hell of a lot faster. And it's like, no one ever considers that possibility. They're so focused on the negative what ifs instead of the positive what ifs of like, okay, yeah, what if you don't make a lot of money, but what if you make a million dollars five years from now? Like, that's a possibility. And it's not a possibility if you stay in the big four. No. <laughs> like you're, you can't make that much money. That's something I think about all the time because I know money is a huge, probably one of the biggest things that holds people back is that they think they would make less money doing what they love or they're so focused on, if I start my own business, either they don't believe that they can um, make a lot of money or they just are worried about what if it doesn't work out. Um, but I know we already, we already talked a lot about but that's the it. what if like, it I doesn't mean, work out. How many, like, I would say if you're going into it thinking you're going to quit or it's going to be awful and you're not going to make it, you're right. Exactly. I mean, you are always right. Whether you say you're going to make it or you're not, like you're going to be right. You just have to choose which right you want to be. Hey there, sis. If you're listening to this right now and you're like, holy shit, I want in. Get me out of this miserable accounting job. I want to work toward starting my own business, working for myself. I'm ready to make a change and create my freaking dream life. Then you need to apply for my Career with Purpose Academy, okay? Enrollment is open until the 27th, and I am going to be working with a limited number of badass women who are ready to create their dream life. This is for you if you want to do work you love, do something that makes an actual impact on the world and gets you excited to wake up in the morning and leaves you going to bed at night feeling so, so fulfilled. Maybe you have a dream of exactly what you want to do and you just don't know how to make it happen or maybe you have no idea what you actually want to do and you just feel super stuck because accounting is all you know and you know that you would love to work for yourself but you have no idea what you would even do or how you would even make it happen, okay? This is for you. You deserve to be living a life that you love. You deserve to be doing work that you love. You deserve to enjoy every single day of your life, not just the weekends. Okay, we're going to crush every single limiting belief that's trying to tell you you can't have your dream life, that you wouldn't make enough money, 
that people aren't going to support you, that people are going to judge you, that you're not good enough. All of that is a lie. And by the end of these 90 days, you are going to feel so freaking confident that you can create exactly what you want for your life and for your career and for your business. And I cannot wait to get started. So click the link that's in the show notes. You can learn more about the program and submit your application before enrollment ends. Okay, let's get back to this amazing, amazing interview. Yeah. And I also was thinking earlier when you were talking about like every time you've gone all in, you haven't failed because I think, you know, everyone always wants to have like their backup plan and their plan B and like, what if it doesn't work out? I can go back to accounting. And I had that in the back of my head when I quit my job, but I also knew that like, I never really considered an option for me. Like I would say that to like my parents to make them feel better about the fact that I was quitting my job. But I knew I was like, I'm going all in on this and I'm doing whatever it takes. And I think there's so much value in like not having a plan B because then you have to figure it out and you will. Like, I know that I'll always figure it out, whatever situation I'm put in. And so sometimes just like burning all your bridges and not giving yourself a plan B is what you need to kick you in the ass to make you go all in. Yeah, I mean, like for me, it sounds a little drastic, but just because I went through it, I'm like, hey, you didn't die this week, you're good. Like, (laughs) that's what I tell myself. I was like, are you gonna die today? That wasn't that bad. (laughs) That's what I tell myself. It's like, you know, dying wasn't that bad. Uh, Like, and I just kind of make a joke out of it. It's like, you know, is that the worst case? Like dying is the worst case? Okay, I've already been there, so, and I came back, so, you know. This That's incredible. Going. I can't. <laughs> That's such a good thing that you have to come back to to <laughs> just be like, you know what, as bad as today was, at least I didn't die today, which I guess we all have that to come back to. But <laughs> Yeah, but like, I've actually been through it. So it's like, and my husband goes like, you're kind of that, that's kind of a sick way to look at it. I'm like, <laughs> well, sometimes you just kind of need to like, it's not about ignoring your fear. I, I don't think I would ever say that to anyone. Like, don't ignore it. Like, if that's really yeah. a concern you have, like address it and be like, this is where, like, this honestly is what worries me, but try to like take the leap still. Like don't, don't make a stupid yeah. call. Like, you know, you know, if you know you're going to get in trouble or like you, you can't do it, like modify your plan, but don't let fear kind of stop you. Like so many times, like I know I've talked to you about it for Instagram for me, cause I don't really <laughs> use it like outside of like just me scrolling through stuff. I was like, oh my goodness, I am so scared. I'm going to post something and I'm going to look like I don't know what I'm doing. And the first couple of times I will feel that way. But I yeah. like taught myself to use that muscle of like, despite my fear of like looking stupid or like not knowing what I'm doing, just, just do it a couple of times. And then you kind of build that confidence, get comfortable with just putting yourself out there that you're like, yeah, mm-hmm. that was really silly. <laughs> like that was just really yeah. fun of me. And then, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. And I think one of the, I don't know if I would call it a skill, I guess, I guess it is a skill. Like one of the most valuable skills that I have is I think being able to push past that fear whenever it comes up and just like do the damn thing anyways. And it really is like a muscle. Like the more you do it, the more reps you put in, the more used to it you get and it becomes easier. Like now when I'm about to put, like what for my podcast, when I launched my podcast, I literally was like, my first few episodes are probably going to be really cringe, but I'm I'm just going to do them anyways, because your first attempt at anything is always going to be really cringe. So you just need to get it over with. It's not a matter of waiting and thinking more and figuring it out and learning more things like you don't get the better. best way no the only way to get better is to do it and it's the same way with anything and I think especially with starting a business and um, I'm sure a lot of people listening are either online coaches or want to have their own business online business someday that's really the biggest first step is like yes, you're going to look like an idiot on the internet, but you just do it anyway. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I found like, so I started working with someone like to be my mentor. So like, you know, 
I, I will put it out there. I did not know how to do everything in my business. Like I, I yeah. felt still figuring out, like, I know what I know how to do and I know how to get the help for the stuff I don't know how to do. So I worked with someone and like, it, it took me a while. Like, honestly, it took me more than a year to figure out, but it mm -hmm. was, it's, everyone is a beginner at some point. Like everyone is. Yes. And sometimes when I felt really crappy where I was like, oh my God, my email for like getting new clients sounds like super like dumb or whatever <laughs> it was. Like I created a logo and it looked like it was clip art, <laughs> but whatever it was, <laughs> I would go like, it would be my little like fun thing to do to look back on like someone that I admire in the industry. And I'm like, I want to know what mistakes or like what yeah. stupid stuff they did in the beginning. Cause like now I look up to them and I'm like, oh my goodness, like you have an amazing business. You did all this. And then I would like look up their stuff. And I'm like, I'm with you. I was there last week. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to like, if there's someone on YouTube, like a YouTuber who has a really successful business now and going back to watch like their first few videos, like they're always, everyone has a day one, you know? <laughs> And it's great. Like if you can look back and go like, you know what? It might have been like not so great, but you know, they did it. Like you look back and you're like, I'm so proud of the person I was back then, even though I had so yes. much to learn because I was brave enough to do it. And it's really yeah. just about like you were just, you know, you were okay with not being okay. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, what are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned from entrepreneurship and starting your own business? Um, I would say, don't believe your own bullshit. <laughs> that would be like number one. <laughs> I think because I had felt like, you know, in terms of like socially, like people like respect so much, like, oh, you're an accountant that worked at PwC, like, or, or ENY or whatever it would be, right? Like they would respect it and be like, Oh, you worked like at such a, like an awesome job. Um, I felt like I was entitled to succeed a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, well, this person worked like at a less of firm. I, like they can't have a better business than me. Right. And I, yeah. like, I believed my own bullshit way too much. Like I, and I, I've learned to like keep myself in check and be like, look, you, unless you're the top person, like the top dog, you have a lot to figure out still. So like be a little <laughs> humble. So that would be one. Uh, two would be, don't be afraid of like not knowing the answer. I felt like in the beginning, mm -hmm. because I was working with new people and I might not have had the, I haven't handled that scenario before. Like, so like you learn in school, like this is how payroll works. And someone was clearly not running payroll that way. And you're like, what do I do? <laughs> I, I found that to be comfortable with that and not try to give everyone an answer. Like, be comfortable with saying like, Hey, I might not know it, but I think give me a little bit and I'll get back to you on it. Like being yeah. able to like, be comfortable with not knowing, um, being comfortable with asking for help, mm -hmm. uh, like from other people and like being able to be vulnerable, even with your clients where you feel like you have to know it all. You don't like, you can be vulnerable and say, look, I made that mistake too. And they'll be like, you did like it ha it's happened. Yeah. Like, like, but you're an accountant. How did you make that mistake? Like, I haven't done anything criminal or anything. But like I, you know, like for me, it was like, I hadn't done my annual filing for my business, like something like stupid. I'm like, yeah. For a living. It's because like, no, we all been there. Uh, outside of that is, yeah. Like don't believe your bullshit, you know, be afraid, like be comfortable with like not knowing, um, building your tribe, like, uh, like your tribe, your community, people you can go to and say, it's a journey that you go on alone, but you can have people around you. Cause a lot of times I will say mm -hmm. that was really hard. Like working, you know, going from like seeing like 15 or 20 people on my team that became kind of your work family to like being in a home office, like by yourself. And like, I have my two dogs yeah. and they're great, but you know, they don't talk back. Uh, <laughs> like knowing that I have people that I can reach out to and say, Hey, Lindsay, like, can I tell you, I've had a rough day. Like 10 people said no to my face and told me like I, I was a horrible accountant or, or like something crazy where you're just like doubting yourself because you don't have people around you to be like, no, it's okay. It's part of the journey. Like maybe next yeah. time try this or like kind of 
opening myself up to like being criticized, but like also getting feedback, like that was like one of the biggest lessons. Like I remember I joined a bunch of Facebook groups and I would see people post and I'm like, I wouldn't share that about me. Like not that they were like uh, bad things or like things you did wrong, but it's just like being able to be vulnerable, like on the internet with people that you yeah. don't, you've never met. That to me was like a game changer. Like now I'll post like, guys, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> or, hey, like I'm really struggling with that. Does anyone else like that made a world of a difference personally and in my business? Like, I would say those were like the major ones that I've figured out so far. I'm sure I'll add to it next time we talk. Yeah, no, for sure. I love don't believe your own bullshit. I might have to steal that from you and like literally call my coaching program that because that's really what life coaching is, is teaching you how to stop believing your own bullshit. <laughs> like the majority of my program, I mean, so my main program is helping accountants who yeah. are like stuck in their quarter life crisis and trying to figure out what they want to do. They want to start their own business and they have all of those fears come up and it's like, okay, well, step one, after you like are clear on what you really want is literally writing down all the reasons why you don't think you can have it. Like you think you'll make less money. You're scared of what people are going to think. What if you fail? All of those thoughts that come up and then one by one, realizing that they're all bullshit and that you don't have to believe them. And really all of our thoughts are just stories that we're telling ourselves and we can choose a new story if we want to, you know? Um, so I will definitely credit you, but I might have to steal that. That's, <laughs> and take it because it's true. Like I'm telling you, this happened to me like three weeks ago with my mentor. Like he said that yeah. and I said, no, you are wrong. <laughs> like I didn't tell him that, but I was thinking that. And again, he has a multi-million dollar business and I'm not there yet. So he would know, I would say to some extent better than I would. And mm -hmm. when I realized that like when someone's giving you advice, part of it is like keeping yourself in check. Like sometimes you'll get bad advice. So, yeah. or you'll give yourself advice and sometimes you're great, sometimes you're not, but like giving yourself room <laughs> to say, don't believe your own bullshit. Like just, just don't, like <laughs> you could be wrong. Like leave room for like, you could be wrong about that and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. So what advice would you give or what would you say to someone who is, feeling stuck in their job in accounting, stuck in their quarter life crisis, like we both have been and sitting on their bed every morning for an hour trying to get themselves to go to work <laughs> and wanting to work for themselves. Um, but they're scared for all the same reasons that we <laughs> were also scared. I would say, don't feel weird. You are normal. Like what you're experiencing is a hundred percent normal. Like don't think that you're, you're the only person that's gone through it. Uh, if you can, kind of reach out to someone who's gone through it. I feel like having a buddy or having someone like a mentor or, or someone that you can go like, hey, can you guide me through this journey a little bit? Can you like walk me through mm -hmm. it and do what's right for you? Like don't, I feel like to some extent nowadays, entrepreneurship has become kind of sexy. It's like, ooh, I, I have a yeah. startup, like, or whatever it is. Like, don't do it for what other people are going to say seems like to be in fashion at the time. Like don't start a business because you think it's going to give you like that edge or like, you're going to be like special. Like, trust me, there's plenty of us <laughs> like who are not that special. Uh, do it because yeah. it's something that will get you excited in the morning. Like, you know, you're not doing what you like when you are sitting in that bed in the morning, trying to like psych yourself up to do it. If, yeah. Something's causing you that like take a step back and go like what's causing it? Can I do something about it? Is it because I'm not going at it the wrong way? The right way or is it because like it's just generally not the person I've become? Because you can you can change. Like the person you are last year is not the person you are this year. I can tell you. I've been that person. <laughs> last year I yep. was in about a week I was in a coma. So like and you ask me now I'm like I'm I'm a different person. So my advice to that person is try to reach out to someone, try to have a conversation um, and ask those questions. Like ask about those fears you have. Like we've all had them. Like just feel like, just know that you're not alone. You're not the only person that's gone through it. Hopefully you have someone in your life or someone on the internet. I will tell you, most people on the internet tend to be 
nicer than it seems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you can reach out to most people and they will at the very least make five minutes for you. So reach out, yeah. ask those questions. And you know, if it takes you a little bit longer, that's okay too. Like, don't think that you need to take the leap in a week. Um, yes. you know, yeah. if you have the luxury of being able to plan your journey of, you know, starting your own business, like do that. Like, don't, you don't have to be me and start a business with a two month old on maternity leave. Like you don't have to do that. Like that, that, like <laughs> that's not the best approach or like, don't try to like rebuild a business coming out of a coma. Like <laughs> is it going to work for everybody? No, but it has to be you at the end of the day. Like just the, the one thing the advice I've gotten from everybody is the more you, you can make it, the better it's going to turn out. Cause the more authentic it is, the, mm -hmm. the more people are going to resonate, like the easier it's going to feel like you're not going to have to psych yourself up. If it's, yeah, as, yeah. As in the coaching world, we'd say the more aligned it is with who you are, the easier yep. it is. Yes, there's going to be things that are going to make you uncomfortable and you're going to have to work through that. We're not talking about those things. We're talking about yeah. <laughs> like, if it's making you sit in the morning on your bed to psych yourself up, have a conversation about that. Yeah. I, that's such a great point because a lot of people like I'll get DMs all the time of people um, asking like, or it just seems like a lot of people think they have to just like up and quit their job with like without having a plan, without having a business yet and like quit their job and then figure it out. And I think just because of my story, I, I don't know, like a lot of people will ask me a question about like, how do I like get to a place where I can quit my job? And it's like, well, you don't have to quit your job before starting your business. <laughs> like, that's what I did. I quit my job and I went all in because that was me. Like, that's what I needed to do. That was my journey. But that doesn't have to be your journey if that's not what you want to do. And neither options like better or worse. Like, it's just exactly what happened to you like for me I was ending my maternity leave like coming to an end and I realized like I had to make a choice like life made me choose and that's the mm -hmm. choice I made and I chose to make it work but and the other thing I've learned is like there are people that go through multiple businesses so it's not like you have to like quit your job and find the business I, yep. I don't think we touched on this so I remember specifically sitting on my bed in New York, because I was at that point where like I was about to move to Oklahoma and I was in the process of transferring. So like they weren't putting me on any new projects because they're like, well, she's going to move. So it's going to be weird and onboarding and all that. So I had like about, I think like a month and a half where like I would just be on my computer at home. Like I had mm -hmm. nothing to do. I just like, you know, someone reached out to me, I had to respond. But, and at that point, what I thought my calling after the big four was going to start a little uh, craft shop on Etsy. So, Oh yeah. I think you did tell me this before. <laughs> I, I told, I, I don't think we covered it on the podcast, but like, I, I will tell you, that's what I, like, I remember having a friend who happened to be a senior and he's like, look, you just got to find something outside of work to like give you, you know, motivation. And I was like, mm -hmm. this is what it's going to be. I'm going to start my Etsy and it's going to become a brand. And then, you know, it's going to be, I'm going to sell kits for the stuff I make. And then it's going to become a thing and I'm going to become the Martha Stewart of whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's, but that's what I thought. And you go through several like iterations of that, like dreaming. And then you find yourself. And like, even with my business now, like it wasn't the business I run now. It's not the business I started with. Like, Back yeah. then I was looking to the sides and like going like, oh, I need to do coaching and bookkeeping and taxes and CFO work and controller work and like retirement planning and investments and just, just know like it's about starting and then kind of adjusting as you go. So like, don't like, if I could give a tip would be, don't think that what you start with is what you have to stick to completely. Like you can't just give up yeah. either, but like, just know, like, again, I thought I was going to start an Etsy store. Did I start yeah. one? No. <laughs> but it, it's what I thought I was going to do. But, like, that was my first, I would say, my attempt to think outside of where I was. 
Yeah, I agree with that so much. And I think that's another thing that holds people back a lot or questions that I get is like, what if you like make the wrong choice? Or like, what if, I mean, I remember one of my friends asked me when I switched from fitness coaching to life coaching and they were like, well, if you thought fitness was your passion, how do you know that life coaching is? Like, how do you know you're not just going to end up getting sick of it and wanting to do something else? And I was like, I don't know that, but does it matter? Like we get so focused on like, what if I'm doing the wrong thing? Like, what is the thing I'm meant to be doing? And it's like, you're going to figure it out. And I think we tend to think of life as like, if you take one, you're like standing in front of two paths and it's like one path is the right path and we can't take the wrong one, but no, both paths are going to lead you to where you're meant to be. They're just different paths. Well, <laughs> like, like I, yeah, think of like, I, I noticed it like before, starting my own business it's like sometimes you gotta yeah. learn what you don't like to know what you like yeah. so sometimes you exactly you know, like I remember for me it was like I had one internship um and I love the people I worked with but I didn't necessarily love the job like I, I I knew that it wasn't something I was gonna be able to do long term so I I wanted to make sure I started my career after college with something I liked and I was like crap, this is my one shot. Cause you know, when, when you're going into the big four, you know, that inter- I, I didn't intern with the big four, but uh, you know, you go into it and you're like that internship, that's, you know, that's the one you need because that's the company or that the one that you're going to leverage to do like the other, yep. you know, things. And you know, you, you just go like, now I know what I don't like. So I'm one step closer yeah. to what I do like. And It's and that's true. Like no matter door. how many, yeah, no matter how many like detours you take, you're still going to find your way to what you want to be doing. And yeah, I mean, I think it's just a balance. I, I would say like emphasizing again, it's like, look, there are going to be changes or you're going to find things that you like better. doesn't mean that like you have like, I think the other thing we might not have talked about is the shiny object syndrome. Like, look, it's oh, not yeah. about like every time you see someone having success, you're going to flip to that one. Like it's not that kind of a change. But yeah. if you truly deep down know, that it's not for you, like, you know, no matter what changes you make or like, you're going to wake up again, have that feeling of sitting on your bed and going like, I hate this, then that's okay. But just because someone else had success and because <laughs> you see, like, I see it a lot of times, like I'll have friends who are like, look, I totally nailed this client, like, or I nailed a new contract or whatever. And I'm like, am I doing right? Like, do I need to switch? <laughs> but I, I've developed the, you know, the, the, the skill set of going like, no, they just had, you know, they worked hard for it. Like that's what works for them. Yeah. Figure out what works for me. Like it's not switching. Like I'm still working with coaches. It's not like I'm going to real estate investment tomorrow. <laughs> so like just, you have to balance in between like what's true for you versus, you know, that. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a whole rabbit hole you can go down with, like, comparing yourself to other people, especially in, like, the online coaching space and Instagram and social media. It's so easy to get caught up in that. Um, But, okay, well, thank you so much for doing this again. This was better than I even thought it would be. It's so much gold came up. I'm so excited for people to listen. Um, So before we hang up where can people find you if they wanted to contact you yeah um well you can uh my firm is beckinson financial um i'm on linkedin as paulina beck you can find me on there like seriously feel free to like send me a message or if you have questions like i'll tell you all the stupid stuff i've done (laughs) and (laughs) you know you can also add me on facebook paulina beck um my site like i have my website beckinson financial and then on Instagram, then I'm most active on LinkedIn. I'm working on the other two because I'm, I'm working through those <laughs> barriers, but uh, I, I try to be pretty good about getting back to people. Okay, awesome. Is there anything else that you wanted to say before, before we leave? Don't believe your bullshit. Believe <laughs> your own bullshit. Don't believe your bullshit. I might have to title the episode that. I think that's going to be the title. <laughs> that could work. But I, yeah, just... <sighs> you know, do what's right for you. You'll, you'll, you'll know what's right for you. Oh my gosh. Are you 
so freaking inspired right now because every time I talk to Paulina, I get more and more inspired by her. If you want to find Paulina on social media or contact her, I linked all of her info in the show notes. I'm absolutely dying to know what you think of this episode. So if you're listening, send me a DM on Instagram or take a screenshot, put it up on your Instagram story. Tag me at Lindsay M. Hansen and Paulina at Paulina underscore Beck. I want to thank Paulina again for coming on the show. I'm so beyond blessed to have gotten connected with her. There's truly nothing I love more than connecting with amazing, inspiring entrepreneurs. And I'm just so grateful that the universe brought us together. If you want to join the Career with Purpose Academy, be sure to click the link in the show notes to apply. I love you and I'll talk to you in the next episode.